Jameson, great to see you, man. How's the offseason going? And the big burning question, will you be at Cubs Fest? <laughs> uh, that was a nice tie-in there with the Pirates. Uh, the offseason's been good. I've been up in Chicago for a lot of it, working out up here at Wrigley. Um, and I'm up here right now, actually, at Wrigley in our travel secretary's office, doing Cubs Con this weekend, and then getting married next weekend. So just putting a bow on the offseason and then, you know, just take it right into spring. Your, your your fiance let you go to this a week before you're getting married? She's the one that told me to come. She's the one who's wow. like, you need to be there. You know, you need to Big be on Cubs fan. with teammates and stuff. I know. Big wow, Cubs good, fan. good for her. She's a keeper. I love that. Yep. Is she from Chicago? She went to middle school here, actually, but we met down in Houston. So she's been all she's been all over the place growing up and stuff. Okay. I was going to say, she, is, if she's letting you go, she might be a Cub fan. <laughs> Hey. Or she's just the ultimate teammate, and that's why they're getting married. I love yeah. that. That's awesome. Jamison's going to be letting loose these next couple nights here. Watch out, Chicago. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jamison, I want to start here because the Cubs made a move, right? It's been a quiet offseason, but there's still a billion free agents. So I've been saying, don't worry, they're going to spend. It's just kind of a waiting game. So you got your first teammate in the uh, rotation. Do you know anything about Shota Imanaga and – do you think he'll be part of a six-man rotation with him coming over? Because that's more of the norm once a week out in Japan. Yeah, so I remember watching him in the in the WBC. I remember watching that Japanese team play, and I was like, there's no way they can possibly have any more good arms. Like, I've seen them all after Yamamoto and Otani um, and Sasaki and all these guys. And then I saw Imanaga throw, and I was like, dude, you've got to be kidding me. Like, they just keep rolling dudes out there. So, yeah, I liked his heater. He's got a nice – Hoppy four seam. Uh, I know he throws a lot of strikes and over there he pitches deep into games. I think he'll be a good fit. You know, if you throw strikes on our team, we have a good defense. So I think, you know, that automatically makes it a really nice fit. Uh, our pitching coaches are awesome. He's going to come over and throw to a guy like Jan Gomes, who's been in the league a long time, who I think can help him adjust over here and stuff. So I'm super fired up about it. Um, yeah, don't know a ton about him, but I saw our clubby in there stitching his name onto the back of a Cubs jersey, and it got me pretty fired up. That is pretty cool. Um, I want to talk about you a little bit. You use a lot of technology now uh, to kind of tinker with, uh, you know, your pitching and a little bit like that. Have you seen that help you a little bit? Is that something maybe a little too much? Like, talk a little bit about how technology has helped you be, you know, even a better pitcher. Yeah, you, I mean, you guys all know it's a give and take. It's like, I feel like when I got my second Tommy John surgery, I got pretty into like the biomechanics and just the way the body moves. So I like, I had a moment where I was like, you know, I, 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 this is my body telling me something's not right. You know, you don't just break down for no reason. I did all the training. I had a great work ethic and I'm still getting hurt. So it's like, I'm not moving the right way. I need to take this all the way down, strip it down and like build this thing back up from the ground. So, um, yeah, I got into the way the body moves. I got really into like lower half mechanics, uh, arm pass stuff. And then just from like an analytics perspective, you know, having gone from Pittsburgh, which was maybe a little bit more use your eyes, use your feel of the game. And then I went to New York where it's like, you know, you have access to such a big analytics department and there's a lot of information going around. Um, so I feel like I've been exposed to a lot and I've just learned how to kind of pick up what I need and kind of filter out what I don't need and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it can be useful in adding a new pitch and optimizing grip stuff and looking at slow-mo video and figuring out truly what your best pitch is to different guys and stuff. But you know what, this past year, I thought the best thing I did was around the all-star break was just start going out there and competing. And like, I was having a really bad first half and I was like, I know how to pitch. I know how to pitch in the big leagues. I'm just going to go out there, make sure I'm prepared and just go out and compete and have fun. And I feel like that's when my year turned around is when I just started kind of feeling the flow, trusting the catcher, um, getting out of my way and just doing my thing. Jameson, are you going to, your one way to stay healthy is a six man rotation. Have they told you one, now that you have Im Imanaga that you're going to go to a six man rotation? Or are they going to try to keep him on six days rest? Are you guys going to pitch once a week like they do in Japan? I mean, that's a nice life for a starting pitcher once a week, <laughs> six days of golf, one day of pitching. And you get to sit in the dugout and, and just watch day games at Wrigley. It definitely wouldn't suck, but I haven't heard anything. <laughs> Go to a nice dinner, uh, right? I mean, there's a, there's a million yeah. pluses to this thing. You know, I feel like I feel like every pitcher is different. Like, some guys like that five-day routine. Some guys always love the extra day. I, I haven't heard anything, but I have a feeling it's going to just come down to, like, communicating with the staff. Hey, maybe this guy could use a blow. Maybe this guy, you know, he's on fire. Let's keep this dude on a five-day. Um, we did a little bit of that last year um, when I was struggling – 
around the all-star break, they put me on a 10 day, let me throw some extra sides, gave me a breather. And then by the end of the year, when I was throwing better, I was on a five day and skipping off days and stuff like that. So I have a feeling it's just going to kind of be a give and take. We have the luxury of, um, you know, having some guys, having some depth, like a Javier Assad who can start, Drew Smiley who can start, Wesneski, Jordan Wicks. Like, we've got a lot of guys who are going to be on this team that can start, can relieve, can step in and, and give guys days off, stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't know if they even have a set plan yet, but I do think you can never have enough pitching, and I think we've got some some pretty good options. Wouldn't Tom Ricketts give you a really good Chris, uh, wedding gift by signing Cody Bellinger? <laughs> Uh, I, I'll tell you what, I loved playing with belly. Um, I honestly haven't heard anything, but talk about a dude that like he signed a one-year deal and I feel like it would have been easy for him to come in here and just be like, you know, I'm rebuilding my value. I don't want to get too involved here. I know I'm going to be a free agent, but belly came in right away and was just like the heart and soul of this team. Um, you know, he was just the life of everything. Just so fun to be around huge work ethic. Like I didn't know what to expect. You see all the pictures of him looking stoned in the dugout and stuff. I start playing with him and I'm like, dude, this guy's a dog. Like he's prepared. The work ethics unrivaled. Like he's in the weight room every day. He's constantly watching video. Like the dude's just a baseball rat. And it was infectious. Like I love I started going to the weight room at the same time as him every day to warm up because I just love talking to him and hanging around him and stuff. So um, you know, he's a dude that no matter where he goes, he's gonna be, you know, a great fit. Hopefully it's here. I I seriously loved playing with him. I still play Fortnite with him all the time and play video games and talk on the phone with him and stuff. Oh, so there's more to the player than just his exit velocity, two strike approach. Gee, gee, Willikers, Jameson, you're really <laughs> there's, breaking there's the big news. There's a lot more to like, a guy like Belly. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, so he's, he can, so he's a, go ahead. He, I was just going to say he can shape a culture. I feel like he came in here and he was just the guy that everyone was like kind of gravitated towards you you guys have i'm sure played around guys like that where it's like people just want to be around this dude he's cool he's got great energy obviously he's a good player um so yeah he, he checks a lot of boxes and yeah i mean there's there's a lot more than just you, you know what you see on the field with a guy like that well next time you're on the sticks with him before your wedding day because that's when the sticks ends you get married yep. and then it's just road trips no more no more call of duty time but yeah, tell him that he needs to come on FT and hang out and talk to the boys, so we can get his we can get his side of the whole whole shtick here. I'll drop that in there. I'll drop that in there. Yeah, I, I try to get stuff out of him when I play video games with him, and you know he hasn't he hasn't given me much, so maybe he'll give you guys <laughs> something. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he'll just I'm sure he'll just <laughs> open up like a like a waterfall here. You said you said he's kind of a baseball rat. You tweeted about going on Baseball Reference, something I love doing, like looking at guys. I would never look at a dude's strikeouts. I would never do that to myself, but I would look at like Barry Bonds and like yep. all the like bold, <laughs> bold <laughs> and italic oh. stuff. Hold on. That, wait, you're comparing yourself to Barry Bonds? No. His oh, tweet I was, was like, damn. <laughs> his tw- what, what on earth would I compare myself to Barry Bonds for? Why the hell are you looking at his baseball reference then? <clears throat> because his tweet was, he's like, do you guys ever go on baseball reference? And look at dude's stats and like, yeah. oh my gosh, like look what Randy Johnson did from like, it's like bold italics, like highlighted the whole way through. So I would look through and like, I loved looking at like Barry Bonds's baseball reference. So I, no matter what AJ says, I'm on the same page as you, <laughs> but when you, when you're done and you retire, what do you want people to see from your baseball reference? What's the one Ooh baseball reference like highlight that you like you're like i mean look i've come to grips with the fact i'm not going to be a hall of famer i've come to grips with all that i just want to be healthy and post up and be a good teammate and i think game started as a starting pitcher is extremely valuable just being a dude who's steady who's out there every five days so yeah just you know having gone through some injury stuff earlier in my career just the fact that you can be healthy and available and be out there that means a lot to me at this stage of my career. Like, I think that's the way I can be the best teammate possible. It's just to post up, be on that lineup card, be out there, be available. Uh, but yeah, dude, I'll, sometimes I'll just get curious. Like, I grew up a diehard baseball fan. I was a big Astros fan. And I'll go on Baseball Reference and just be like, oh, dude, remember, like, Morgan Ensberg? Like, that dude was a freaking <laughs> hero to me back in the day, dude. Like, I used to be in my backyard being like, right now, I'm, I'm Adam Everett playing shortstop or whatever. And I'll go yeah, look at their Baseball References and be like, 
<laughs> Everyone was a hero to me back then. And I'll go back and look at guys' baseball references and be like, what did their career actually look like now that yep. I'm in the big leagues playing and stuff? Yep. Yeah, we swept that team. They sucked. So sorry to <sighs> You broke my heart back then, dude. Well, but it, well you, hey, you didn't say he some, was picturing AJ Brzezinski at the plate. That's yeah, fine. Right. broke his heart. He booed, he booed me as a kid. It's Not fine. the I'm first afraid. time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's okay. Uh, we, we, so we had Lucas Giolito on. Actually, we had Jonathan Pavelbon on yesterday. We were talking about Lucas Giolito, and he's a big gamer. And before his starts, he goes on uh, video games and pitches as himself against the team. I've heard that. And Jonathan Pavelbon's like, can you imagine this? So do you do that? <laughs> No, I've never done it. I've never done it. I, I don't play sports games anymore, but I've heard Giolito does that. I feel like I've heard Max Fried might do a little bit of that too, and it is interesting because they're not just pulling those heat maps out of nowhere. Like, I'm sure they have numbers that show guys hot and cold zones, but, you know, with all the data and stuff at the end of the day, to me, the older I've gotten, it's more simple than I used to think it is. It's like, dude, a fastball down and away, unless you're facing Mike Trout, is a good pitch all the time. A slider down and away is a good pitch. Like a fastball above the zone is going to be a good pitch. So I don't know. A lot of my like preparing and like stuff I look at more is like who swings at the first pitch, who's super aggressive, who's super passive, stuff like that. But when it comes to like hot zones and cold zones, I feel like for the most part, it's pretty much the same. Wait, so Dean Trainer was wrong? You don't just <laughs> throw the fastball inside. Jim Benedict, <laughs> throw the fastball inside. Hey. A fastball in's not a bad pitch. That's not a bad option either. A lot of the it's times. a ball, but, but there are you know I re, dude I remember on that sixteen Pirates team I remember talking to David Freeze. I was talking about like intimidating guys. I was like in the minor leagues, you know, we were taught to like you take a big swing, I freaking throw at you. Like yep. you know you you take you have success off me, I'm gonna drop you and make you uncomfortable. David Freeze was like, dude, that's such bullshit. Like. <laughs> I'm. I know that to be a good big leaguer, I have to stand in the same place in the box and hunt the same pitch. Like if you throw at me, that's not uncomfortable to me. That's me like knowing I've I've got you where I want you. He was like, you know what's uncomfortable is Jacob Degrom throwing a hundred down and away on a Nat's ass every time. Like that's <laughs> facts. That's a fi- that's the stuff you were fed in the Pirates organization. You were fed this this unrealistic ide- ideology of what the big leagues is by people who didn't pitch in the big leagues. Yeah. But Hey, yeah. you had to learn. You had to learn in that. I mean, there's so many pirate, give me your favorite pirate city story. Cause every time we have somebody on, it's not about bashing the pirates. It's not about, it's about just stuff that you guys went through oh. to get to where you are now. I mean, one of my favorites was I had hit a point where I was done with like the Navy SEAL training and I got to, I think I was going to like the Arizona Fall League or something. So I flew into instructional league, maybe like, let's say a week late or something like that. Um, Just knowing my season was going to be longer. So I show up straight from the airport, have my bags, get out of the car at Pirate City. I go grab some lunch. The cafeteria is open and I see dudes just looking like broken. Like these dudes are all sweating. They have sand all over their face. And they're sitting down eating like rationed meals, like just soup and apples for the day. And I'll just never forget seeing like Alan Hansen and all these like top prospects sitting at a table, just looking defeated, having, you know, rolled around in the sand all day, getting punished, just eating like their little apple and their soup. Um, That's one that sticks out to me. But I was actually talking to some buddies the other day. Pirate City back in the day seemed kind of like a jail cell. You know, you're stuck in there. There's curfew, whatever. When you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you want to be running around. You don't want to be stuck in your dorm room. And I was like, dude, we actually had it pretty good back then. Like, you had good food provided to you all the time. We just played video games. We all hung out together. You know, now me and all my buddies are all, you know, living so far away. I was like, dude, maybe for a bachelor party, I should just, like, run out Pirate City. And we just hang out, play video games, get food made for us. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) I would go back to those times, you know. Bob Nutting would take the money. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. Put it right into the it. roster. Right into the roster. Hey, I got I got to ask you this question. Um, how how was I got the Yankee Met hat on? How was it like playing in New York, man? It's a it's a different ball game up there. What do you think? How was it playing for the Yankees? It's definitely a different ball game. I loved it. I love New York City. Um, me and my fiance live down on West uh, 16th Street, so we we're you know, right in the thick of the city, 
we, I feel like in two years, we took New York for everything it had to offer. We were eating at, you know, so many different restaurants. Um, I was taking the subway all over the place. We just, you know, we took advantage of it. We were doing all the New York things. Um, I, I loved playing for the Yankees. I mean, you talk about just an organization that treats players the right way and families. And, you know, you're always staying at the nicest hotels. You always have the most access to all these resources. Um, you know, and I just being a part of that clubhouse, like I went from playing in Pittsburgh with a bunch of my absolute best friends in the world, but we all came up through the minor leagues together. And then I step into a clubhouse there and it's like, you know, you've got multiple dudes making over $20 million a year. They're hosting big team dinners all the time. And guys are opening sick bottles of wine on flights and passing around all that. Like, I just remember walking into that clubhouse and being like, this is very different. This is not what I'm used to. Um, so I loved it. I mean, I loved it. I had a great time. Um, but yeah, I mean, keep in touch with a lot of those guys. It's definitely different though. The media, the city can be a bit of like an energy sucker. Sometimes you just need to go hide in a dark room and recover and, and get away from it all. Jameson, so one of your boys from your Yankee days, um, and technically, I guess your pirate days too, Garrett Cole obviously had a, another freaking year. Did you see the reports this offseason when the Yanks and obviously many teams were going after Yamamoto? And at one point, someone's like, um, the Yankees didn't want to offer Yamamoto more than Garrett Cole. And I'm like, Cole doesn't care. He would want the guy on the team. That His contract's years ago. Plus, if you picked up, which it'll get picked up for him, his Cole's contract ends up being now like 360. So did you see that? And knowing Garrett Cole, can you just kind of explain, because we haven't talked to him yet this offseason, how he would more than welcome another top-end starter to his team. It wouldn't be like, your contract's currently larger than mine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... First off, Garrett's one of the most intense teammates, like dedicated to winning that I've ever been around. Like this dude's winning site, you know, the Cy Young Award. He's making the money he's making. That dude is out there for every pitch of every game. He's sitting in the dugout, which you guys know a lot of starters enjoy the game from inside on the training table, whatever. Garrett's out there watching, you know, video of, of the hitters and talking to the hitters and hitting coaches and manager. Like he's so engaged in the game that you see a guy like that, like, he's at a point of his career where he's made his money. He's good. All he wants to do is win. And then, you know, we were just talking about New York and the Yankees, like talk about a dude too, that just knows the responsibility of wearing the pinstripes. Like he wants to win in New York. He doesn't care about if someone made a million dollars more, $10 million more. He literally just wants to win. Um, so yeah, I thought that was maybe just some speculation or people overanalyzing it or something. I think Garrett would have been very happy to play with him. I mean, do you ever have a conversation with Garrett Cole, Musgrove, Charlie Morton? You know, just to name a few of what could have been in Pirates uniform if you guys could have stayed there. Bob Nutting would have ponied up and kept you guys around because that's a pretty good five man rotation there you guys have in Pittsburgh, <laughs> along with some yeah. of the other pieces that were traded away. Yeah, yeah, we've definitely all talked about it over over time and. Um, you know, you can bash a lot of what the Pirates did in the minor leagues, but at the same time, you also have to like realize they did a good job of scouting. They drafted a lot of good human beings. Like I made seriously lifelong friends in that organization. I Musgrove will be at my wedding. Garrett will be at my wedding. Chad cool. Trevor, like all those guys will be there. Adam Frazier, you know, you just play with some pretty special dudes. So yeah, you know, we've talked about just how at that point in time, Pittsburgh was the biggest thing to us. And we all wanted to win there and we all wanted to bring championship baseball there. And it's kind of sad that we never were able to. And when we were there, we didn't take more advantage of it. And it took, you know, a lot of guys going elsewhere to have even more success um, because we all talked about wanting to get it done there. So, yeah, I mean, it would have been cool, um, but it just wasn't meant to be. And obviously a lot of guys have gone elsewhere and had success, which is awesome for them. All right, I have to ask you, will Stetson Alley be at your wedding? He will be. Wow, but okay. he just had his second kid yesterday, so he's only coming in for the day of and flying right out. But okay. he will be. Yeah, me and him are in a group text. We talk all the time. Okay, I, I and everyone, Scott, Scott's looking at me like, hey, I know who Stetson Alley is. I'm so a prospect his dad man. was my high school coach. Okay. So that's really? how I, yeah, so his dad, yeah. Danny, was my high school coach, so. That's why, and he, his dad always said, "Oh, you know, Jameson and Stetson were drafted together, and we're coming yeah, we up together." We lived together for a couple off seasons and stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, okay, cool. Uh, Jameson, I got another uh, teammate question for you. So, I've been asked a ton about him recently, and I'm like, "Listen, okay. I can tell you what I saw on the mound. Dude was great in the first half, got hurt in the second half. 
I don't know what, what he's like as a teammate. Obviously, maybe some people think he's misunderstood. I love his antics on the field. Give me the lowdown on what it was like being teammates with Marcus Stroman and what you think his free agent value is like right now. I liked playing with Stro. Um, and he's a, he's a hot topic. Like, I feel like I got asked when I played for the Yankees, I got asked a lot about judge and what's playing with judge. Like, and when I played for the Cubs, I got asked a lot about what Stro's like. Um, Stro is definitely someone who knows at this point in his career, what he needs to do to be successful. So there's not a lot of eyewash. Like he's not a guy who gets to the field at, 1 p.m. for a seven o'clock game, but he shows up, he goes to work, incredible routine, uh, great body control, like just a crazy good athlete. Um, I loved watching him move on the mound and some of the stuff he does in the weight room is wild, like the walking handstands and stuff like that. Um, Just a crazy good athlete. I enjoyed playing with him. He's a good teammate. Uh, He takes the ball, he competes. I I seriously enjoyed playing with him. he bought our whole team Nintendo Switches at one point in the year, and nice. we were all addicted to Mario Kart. Like, that was our big – that was, like, our team theme on traveling. Like, some teams play cards. We had a card game, but, like, we'd have, like, 15 dudes linked up playing Mario Kart against each other on flights and bus rides and all that. Um, so he was always looking to bring the boys together, hosting guys in his hotel room, stuff like that. So I, I actually really enjoyed playing with him. Um, and I just think he's a guy who probably, when he was younger, could have been misunderstood – could have been finding his way. And I think he's at a point in his career where he just knows who he is. He's like unapologetically himself and he just does what he needs to do. We try to sell that all the time on, on this show that the game is too bland, too meh. Does Stroman take it too far? Do you see why people critique it? Because I don't I, think so, but I also saw him when he was in AAA. I saw him, you know, I was up there when he made his debut, similar age when when you were up in the big leagues making your debut, like yeah. I saw where they're at and I've seen the work ethic. So I don't think so, but do you see where people are coming from when they say that? Yeah. I mean, from the outside looking in, I guess I could see, but when you play with them, like I really never felt like he was disrespecting people. Like I, I didn't feel like he was out there trying to just make it all about himself and show people up. Does he have some swag? Yeah. Does he kind of vibe when he's out there and do his thing? Yeah. But that's, part of what makes him good. He needs to feel the flow and he has like an athletic delivery and he likes to feel like a, a ball player out there. So some of the stuff he does when he fields around balls and points to his glove and stuff like that, like, I think that's freaking awesome. Like I watched the dude work. So I'm like, why not have some fun when you're showing off what you were working on? Like, I think that's awesome. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's out there trying to make enemies. I don't think he's trying to rub it in anyone's face. I think he's just having fun. Um, and having played with him. Like, I just know, he truly doesn't care what people think. Like, to be honest, he, he doesn't want to offend anyone, but he also is going to do what he needs to do to be the best version of himself. And he's not going to apologize for pissing a few people off, which I, that, I loved about playing with him. That's all you asked for as a teammate. Now I'm going to go yep. to one of your last thing here for me. We go to one of your opponents. We had him on here already. This is like a NL central, like dichotomy that we're working with here. I have a red sign behind me. Cause I'm at in Goodyear. You're a Cubs fan. We had a pirate on, okay? This pirate is four for five with Mm. three dingers off of you. Do you know who it is? And we asked him to talk smack about you, but he wouldn't do it. Because I'll talk smack about you. I'm one for two with just a single. So if I had three dingers, oh, my gosh. It would have been unbelievable. You know what's funny? I know who it is. It's Jack Sawinski. Uh, that's a tough matchup for me to be completely honest. He's a lefty who doesn't chase much. Um, he's pretty streaky. Like when he's hot, he is hot. Um, and when he's cold, I just seem to never pitch against him. And dude, <laughs> some of the pitches he hit out off me, I threw him an OO curveball, not a banger, but you know, I was like, he's pretty patient. I don't have him swinging in the sixth inning, third at bat at a first pitch curveball, drop it in there. And he hits it like 440 feet off me. Um, but the day after I pitch, I like walking around the field for like 45 minutes with our strength coach during the day. And we were in Pittsburgh and he was out there doing early hitting and I stopped him and I was like, Hey dude, if you need someone to throw you BP, I'm right here. All you have to do is ask. And he didn't, he didn't seem to laugh at it the way I thought he, he didn't seem to love it. Or love it. I was like, I don't know if you know, but you freaking own me, dude. Like it is what it is. That's great. That is That's great. epic. He's yeah, probably he, like too. I don't know if shy is the word. Yeah, he's, he's just like that, that's a year into the shocking because you're a little bit like, whoa, wait a minute, I don't know how to. Because yeah, Jack, we yeah. just had him on. He doesn't seem like the type that's gonna. He's also young, younger. He's player, young. Dude. That's what I'm saying. Young. He's not gonna toot yeah. his own horn. So he's probably yeah. like, whoa, wait, yeah. what? 
That's a <laughs> and, then he, and, then he, and then he and then he should have called you out there and been like, "You're up." <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. I got some dudes. I remember Billy Hamilton used to own me. He has like two homers off me. Oh uh, man. Jose Peraza used to freaking rock me. I've got some weird ones. And then classic like Rizzo used to do really well off me. But I've got some weird dudes who used to rake me. Billy Hamilton like used to really see it well. Wow. <laughs> Stick him next <laughs> Billy time. Hamilton. Stick him right in the ribs. Next no, time. First isn't going to deal with him. I mean, you can't him. hit Billy Hamilton. No. You can't hit no, him. No, I'm not talking about Billy Hamilton. I'm talking about Jack. Oh. oh, Jack. <laughs> Stick him. Now I better not. That way he's only on first. That. Then it would look suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Jack just told us, too, he's going to steal 20 now. He's going to double his stolen bases. But huh? yep. uh, it's going to be a fun fun battle, though. Jameson, awesome to have you on, man, for the first time here. Enjoy Cubs Fest. Congrats on uh, the upcoming uh, big ceremony, the wedding coming up. And we'll see you Thank in spring you. training, dude. And Happy Thank New you. Year. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Talk to you later.